AMD announced the RX 6700 XT. Is the performance really better than an RTX 3070? Will this GPU fall in line with their claims for RDNA 2 providing an improvement of 50% performance per watt? Is the price at 479 justified and will AMD's statement of having significantly more stock at launch enable you to buy this card? Let's get into it. AMD showed slides where the RX 6700 XT will outperform NVIDIA's RTX 3070. At least that is what they want you to take away from their performance charts. Keep in mind, in the presentation, they only showed the performance charts for 10 seconds and didn't speak directly to the performance claims. Now I have analyzed AMD's claims in the past and they haven't been that far off from review day, but this one seems overly optimistic. I mean, better than a 3070? That claim makes me skeptical immediately, and here is my simple logic. If the RX 6800 XT with 72 compute units is on par with an RTX 3080 with 68 SMs, then how does an RX 6700 XT with 40 compute units achieve parity with an RTX 3070 with 46 SMs? Another way to test this claim is if the RX 6700 XT with 40 compute units is on par with the RTX 3070 with 46 SMs, then shouldn't an RX 6800 non-XT with 60 compute units be able to overclock and be on par with a 3080 with 68 SMs? I have not seen anyone make that claim that you can overclock the RX 6800 non-XT to be on par with a 3080. So I decided to do some analysis, just like I've done in the past, and most recently with the RTX 3060. If you haven't seen that video, before the RTX 3060 launch, I wanted to understand what type of performance could be expected for gaming, and we had no leaks for gaming performance. I wanted to understand what I would be buying, or at least trying to buy. And the analysis I did showed that the 3060 would be similar to an RTX 2070. After the reviews went live, several reviewers who were briefed by NVIDIA were told to expect 2070-like performance from the 3060. Let's start with the performance charts from the last video and chart the performance using TimeSpy versus the number of streaming multiprocessors for NVIDIA cards and compute units for AMD's cards. I'll just show the RTX 20 series and 30 series cards. Now if I plot RDNA 1 in the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT, and then add RDNA 2 in the RX 6800, 6800 XT, and 6900 XT. Using my typical analysis, I would predict the performance of the 6700 XT to be about a 3060 Ti level. Well, that seems far off from the better than 3070 impressions AMD left on many. So, what am I missing? Well, the game clock of the 6700 XT is going to be a whopping 2424 megahertz. That's a couple hundred megahertz higher than the big Navi cards. And we have seen the performance improvements of having those cards clocked up to 2700 megahertz. So by taking into account the slight increase in game clock speed, then the 6700 XT will bump up to be higher than the 3060 Ti. However, it's still a ways off from the 3070. So what else could explain the difference? Well, AMD also showed a slide for enabling Smart Access Memory, or SAM, and how that provides up to a 16% improvement in performance. If I add 16% improvement to the performance on the chart, then the 6700 XT is faster than the 3070. But I wanted to dig a little deeper, and I remember watching a video by Steve at Hardware and Box showing performance improvements with SAM on the RX 6800. If you watch any of my videos, you know that I love data and charts, and Steve provides excellent data and charts. I also love that channel's honesty and integrity in all that they do. I'll leave a link in the description, so check out that video if you want to learn more. Thank you, Steve, for providing such fantastic and accurate data. In his video, he shows that Sam provides an improvement in four of the games that AMD showed. Those games are Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Borderlands, Dirt 5, and Hitman. If I remove those percentage gains from AMD's chart to estimate and compare it without SAM enabled, then you can see the RX 6700 XT is now ahead in three titles, Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, and Dirt 5. Understanding that Assassin's Creed and Dirt 5 are AMD sponsored titles, you would expect AMD cards to do well. One thing AMD did not mention is that Call of Duty, Cyberpunk, and Watchdog Legion support DLSS, a feature AMD has yet to implement. 
So you could expect large gains by the NVIDIA cards with that feature enabled. So what does this mean? AMD showed this slide for just 10 seconds and it left an impression on many that this card will be close to a 3070. In a few isolated cases, in certain circumstances, yes. However, NVIDIA is going to implement this SAM-like feature as resizable bar into 30 series cards by the end of March. So the advantage you see with SAM in the charts will be nullified as NVIDIA implements this feature within a couple of weeks. If you did a large 30 or 40 game benchmark, you will find that this card will be closer to a 3060 Ti than a 3070. And at 4K, that gap to the 3070 will widen. That becomes important later on when we talk about how much you should pay for this card. One interesting point I would like to raise is that AMD did not compare the performance of this card to the one that it's replacing, the RX 5700 XT. Where Nvidia showed the performance of their new cards versus the last generation, AMD did not. They showed a slide where RDNA 2 is up to 65% better performance per watt than RDNA 1. They showed the comparison of the die size to Big Navi. So, can we expect the RX 6700 XT to be 65% better than the RX 5700 XT? How about the infamous 50% performance per watt improvement? They didn't say. If this card were to perform like a 3070, then it would be a 50% improvement. But they didn't come out and say that. From my analysis, I expect the 6700 XT to be 25-30% to better than its predecessor, and that will be dependent on how well the AIB partner cards will overclock above the 2424 MHz game clock speed. While AMD has been pretty good with their performance claims recently, this presentation was definitely a regression and more akin to what I would expect from NVIDIA and Intel. By the way, if you learned something from this video and would like to see more, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing with notifications on so that I, along with the YouTube algorithm, will know that you would like to see more content like this. A year ago I did my Big Navi video where I predicted that Big Navi with 80 compute units would be priced at $9.99. And AMD did come out with an 80 compute unit Big Navi at $9.99 in the RX 6900 XT. The price of $4.79 for this card with half the compute units and a much smaller die size comes as no surprise. I'm actually surprised it didn't come out at $4.99. I think it is likely that the motivation for getting you to believe it's better than a 3070 is to get you to more easily accept the 479 price tag, but I don't think they needed to do that. Even though the card they're replacing, the RX 5700 XT was 399, we live in such different times today. With the 6700 XT, you get 4 gigabytes of additional VRAM, and with TSMC raising prices for making the die, the cost of shipping rising, and at least in the US, tariffs also increasing the price, the increase of $79 is not unreasonable. They could have just explained that. Also, the comparisons to the MSRP of the 3070 at $499 is moot since you'll never get that price again. Keep in mind, Nvidia priced the 3070 in late October, and right now, 3070 cards are selling in the $600 to $800 range. Also, the 3060 Ti debuted in early December at $399, and it is now selling in the five to seven hundred dollar range. If you are thinking of getting this card based on its projected performance, you should consider the 3060 Ti range of prices, not the 3070 range. The most disappointing part of the announcement for me was AMD's strategy on launch day. That they will maximize availability by releasing the reference cards and the AIB partner cards at the same time on the same day. Seriously? That's your strategy? You think you can flood the market with your RX 6700 XT so that gamers can get one? You think you can outnumber the army of bots from miners and scalpers? For miners, I expect it to mine in the mid to upper 40s mega hash per second, and while not as good as the 5700, it is still profitable, so this card will be in high demand from miners. To me, it really shows how out of touch AMD execs really are. This strategy is maximizing availability for miners and scalpers. They are not helping gamers at all. The miners and scalpers have been buying these cards in volumes for months now and have had a lot of practice and have become very sophisticated in purchasing these cards in milliseconds, 
while average Joe Gamer who buys a card every couple of years has virtually no chance. What is AMD thinking? As fast as they release these cards, the bots will buy them up for miners and scalpers, while average Joe Gamer will be left banging on the F5 key and wondering why he can never get to checkout. I was so excited for this generation of GPUs with Big Navi versus Ampere that I made a series of videos. However, in my video in early December, I stated that if availability didn't improve by March, then that this could become the lost generation. Well, it's been six months since the RTX 3080 launched, and I still can't get one for a decent price. Same with the RX 6800. Maybe I'll just wait until the next generation. I hope it turns out better for you. Check out my thoughts on the RTX 3060 or my Big Navi series here. Thank you all so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.